Hi class, this is going to be a step-by-step -step video taking you through the Bistro site, which is project one. Um, we are going to be going step-by-step -step through the book. So if you like reading and you want to do that on your own, you're welcome to. Or you can watch this video and follow along on your own computer. So for the project meeting, um, every, every project that we do on here is going to have the project meeting notes. Sorry, I'm just trying to find my book here. And we're going to start out there. So go to project one and you have the bistro site. So it says your client has a successful farm to table restaurant in a popular vacation destination community in California. She has already designed the pages for her new site but has hired you to make sure everything works properly and then make the site available to the browsing public. So we're going to learn about doing site definitions. We're going to learn about moving files around inside a root folder. We're going to learn about creating relative links, defining absolute links to external sites and email addresses, and improving search engine optimization with file names and titles. And then we're going to also learn how to cloak files. So, I'm going to make this full screen here. So it says in the client comments, I already created the pages for our site, but I don't know which links to use and I'm not sure how to create them. I've also heard that there are certain things you should do to improve a site's search engine rating, which is obviously important for a small business like mine. The more, and then the art director says, the more pages you add to a site, the more complex it becomes until it's almost impossible to make sense of what you have and where it is located. Websites, even those with only a few pages, should be designed with a good organizational plan, making it easier to modify pages later. Once you have a handle on the organization, make sure the pages link to each other properly. Visitors get frustrated very quickly when they're forced to return to the home page every time they want to jump to a different set of pages. The last thing you should do is add page titles and change file names to give a better indication of what's on each page. Doing so will make the reader make the site more accessible to people with screen reader software and it will also improve the site's results on search engines. Um, so now that we live in such a digital universe, it's really important to have a site that is optimized for search engines. And this textbook takes into that into account and helps you incorporate steps into your website that are going to help your search engine ranking. Um, so you'll see things um, throughout this book that have to do with optimizing for search engines. So these are all the things that we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and look at stage one here. Um, so the site structure is going to be the first thing that we're looking at. We're going to be organizing the structure of the web pages and the images and all that. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is download the Bistro zip folder and unzip it. You should already have done that actually in our setup for the course. Um, so you should have found the Dreamweaver files in our Canvas course. And then okay, sorry, got locked out there. So when you go to Dreamweaver, um, wherever you saved those files I saved mine on the desktop under ATC Dreamweaver files. That unzipped folder should be um, on your desktop or wherever you chose to save it. Okay. 
So that file has HTML pages, it has JPEGs, it has Illustrator files, PNGs, and a CSS document. Okay. So you're going to open up Dreamweaver and you're going to go up to Site and New Site. And this site is going to be called Bistro. And then you're going to navigate, click on the little browse folder, navigate to that Bistro folder. And it should already be unzipped. Okay. So choose that as your root folder and then click save. And then what you will see it over here in your files panel. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is look at your files panel. And you can see that there's um, a bunch of different file types in here. We're going to open up the main page, which is always called index.html. That's what you always call your home page. So double click on that. And I'm in code view, but if you're in design view, it should look like this. and I want you to switch it to live view. Okay, so live view is going to be the most accurate representation of what it would look like in a browser, um, but it's still not going to be exact. Okay. Now you can close out of that one, so that's the home page. We're going to look at the about page, so go to about.html and double click on that. So this one has a bit of a different layout, different design, but it has the same navigation menu up at the top as the other one. Okay, the next page we're going to look at is menu one. So double click on menu one. It has the same layout as the about page, but obviously the, the content is going to be different on this one because it is a menu. Okay, so with all of these pages, we know we're going to have four main pages and then we're going to have a sub page here, lunch and dinner, that we can toggle back and forth. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead with organizing our folders. So I'm on page 33 in our book. So now that you have the Bistro site defined over here, you can see in your files panel that we have all of these um, different file formats in the same folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a little bit and organize it. And it's a really good idea to work from the files panel in Dreamweaver because if you're moving things around, it will update any links automatically for your site. So if you have your navigation already set up and you move something into a folder or a subfolder, then Dreamweaver will fix it for you in the code automatically. So we're going to right click on the very top folder. So this is our root site folder. We're going to right click and we're going to choose new folder and we're going to call it resources all lowercase. So this is a folder that we're going to put some of our resources in. Um, so if you click on this little refresh button, it will put it in alphabetical order. We're going to create another new folder, so go back up to the top and right click New Folder. 
This one's going to be called images, all lowercase. And then we're going to create one more folder called menus and keep sh make sure that you keep all of it lowercase letters. Okay, so now we have some subfolders. We don't have anything in them yet. So now we're on page 34. We're going to um, we're going to move some of our files around and Dreamweaver is going to keep track of all of our links for us, okay? So that's why you want to do do this inside of Dreamweaver instead of in maybe like your folders or something. Okay, so you're going to go right click where it says local files and you can sort the files by their size, their type, or anything else. Okay, so we're going to choose type and that's going to sort our files by type. So it puts all the JPEGs together, um, all the PNGs together, and so on. So all of our images we want to drag into the images folder. So the very first one you're going to see on here that's an image is burger.jpg. So click on that and drag it into the images folder. Okay, and when you drag it, it's going to ask you if you want to update the affected pages. And we're going to click update. So go ahead and click that. Okay, and you're going to do that with all of the images in this folder. So we've got um, chips.jpg. If you hold down um, command on the Mac, you can select multiple files. Or if you hold down control on Windows, you can select multiple file files and they don't have to be consecutive so you can just click on the ones you want so I'm holding down command on my Mac um, we're also going to choose any PNG files you don't have to do this one because it's already in there okay so go through select all the JPEGs and the PNG files. Those are images. Okay, and then you can just click on one of them and drag it to the images folder and it's going to put all of them in there. And you want to click update on your links. Okay, so we've got all our JPEGs in there and now you can twirl the little images folder closed and it, it gives you a more cleaned up view of what's going on. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select menu1.html and menu2.html and we are going to move them into the menus folder. So just click and drag into the menus folder. And when it asks you to update the links, you want to say yes. Okay, and then... The last one we're going to do is our resources, and those are things that you wouldn't want to upload to your server, um, like an AI file. 
this is an Adobe Illustrator file and it's not really usable for websites. Um, it's just kind of a, a resource if you need to go back and modify the logo later. So you can drag that into the resources folder. And I'm just going to delete this one because it, it's an extra that I created. Okay, so this is what your folder should look like now. It should be more organized. You should have index, about, events in your main root folder, and also styles.css. And then inside of this main root folder, we have three subfolders. We have images, menus, and resources. And then inside of those, we have all of our images, our two menu pages, and our resource page. So now we're on page 37 in our book, and it's talking about hyperlinks. Um, if you want to take a minute and read about that on page 37. There's a lot of different ways to create hyperlinks within Dreamweaver. Um, the most common way is to use the insert panel and insert hyperlink. Okay, So we're going to open up index.html by double clicking on it. And we are going to turn off live view. So go up here and switch to design view. And you want to go ahead and select the word home at the top of the page. So highlight the word home. Right now it's not linked anywhere. And we're going to set up a hyperlink for it. Um, so if you go over to your insert panel on the right, make sure it's on the HTML tab, which it should be by default. And then you're going to click hyperlink, insert hyperlink, brings up this dialog box and the text says home, that's what we want it to say. Where it says link, you're going to click on the little browse folder. And this is our root folder here, so we want to stay within this folder. Um, and we're going to click on index.html. So even though we're on the index page, we still have to link the home button to the index page. Okay. So click open. It's going to put the file name right there, index.html. We don't need to do anything on this part right now, so just click OK. And that should have created our hyperlink. Okay. Um, oh, I did miss something. So where it says title, um, you can go down to your properties panel and change some things too. It wanted us to put the target as self, which you don't have to do, but you can. And then where it says title, just type FB Fresh Bistro Homepage and then press tab. And it will add that to the link. Create, um, creating a title for your link um, helps people with screen readers. Okay, so now let's look at the code and see what happened here. So um, go to the split view. And it should still be highlighted. So this is what we added right here. Okay, so the word, it was just li and then the word home, okay? But now we've added the A tag. So the A is a link, 
the href setting tells the link where to go. This is the attributes of our A tag. The title attribute tells screen readers what's going on. And then the target attribute tells your tabs what to do. Okay, so if, if it's on target self, then it's just going to open the link in the same frame or browser window as the link. So it's basically like any website when you click on a link it switches to that page. Okay. You can also set it to target blank which would open it in a new window if you wanted to open um, that particular link in a new window. Okay, so now we're going to do that with all of the navigations. The next one we're going to select is about. Try and select just the word, not, not the li tag with it. That's why it helps to be in split mode because you can see what you're actually selecting in the code. Okay, so we don't want the tag, we just want the word about. Um, Another quick way to create a link is from the properties panel. So if you have something selected and then you go down to prop the properties panel, you'll see that there's a link field and you can click on the little browse button next to that and it creates a hyperlink as well. So we're going to do that this time and we're going to choose about.html. Then you're going to select the word menus. Um, another way you can create a hyperlink from the properties panel is with this little target point to file. So make sure your files panel is open. And then you can click on the little target and drag to a file to link to that file. So we're going to link this one to menu one. Okay, so in the field down here, it should say menu slash menu one dot HTML is that link. And then the last one is special events. So go ahead and select that. Um, you can hold down, another way to make a link is to hold down the shift key and then click the text that you have selected and drag to the page you want, so events.html. So you can do it from design view as well. That's only on a Mac computer. Um, if you're on Windows, you can use any of the other methods, like from the Properties panel or the Insert panel. Okay, so now we have all of our hyperlinks. Um, notice in the code they all have an A tag now. And then let's go to Live View and check out what it looks like. So when you're in Live View, You can see what it's actually going to look like in a browser. Um, the next step is on page 44, so let's go down to the bottom of this page in Live View. And they want us to click in the footer paragraph, so selecting the footer. And notice that it outlines it with a blue box, and it says P. So that means that it's inside of a paragraph tag. Then you want to select the words against the clock 
Incorporated. And as soon as you select those words, we can actually create a hyperlink out of those, okay? So when you're in live view, you'll see this little chain right here. I didn't get the last period there at the end, okay. So see that little chain right there, it says hyperlink. If you click on that, this is a quick way to create a hyperlink as well. And when you're entering a link to an external website, you wanna type the HTTP colon slash slash www. You want to use the full link. And then you can press enter. Okay, and then we'll go back to design view and save. And that should create a hyperlink to the publisher's website. Okay, so go back up to your top menu and click on any of the links in Design View. When you click on a link, you're going to see down here, this is our tag selector. And basically this tells us what we're looking at or what we've clicked on. So we've clicked on the A tag inside of a paragraph inside of the, oh sorry, I wasn't clicked on it. Okay, so now it changed. So the A tag inside of the list item, inside of the unordered list, inside of the nav, inside of the body. Those are all of the tags surrounding that particular one. So this kind of helps us know where we're at in a document. And that's why it's called the tag selector. Okay, so you want to click on the UL tag, and that's going to select the entire unordered list. What's happening in code view is you're selecting basically from line 11 to line 16, okay, including the UL tags. And you're going to copy that, and we're going to paste it on all of the other pages. So we're going to control C or command C, or you can go up to the edit menu, edit copy. And then we're going to open the about page. So go over to your files panel, double click on about to open it. And then we want to paste it over the menu that's here. So if you click anywhere in that menu, then you can use your tag selector to select the UL unordered list. And then you can do control paste or control V, command V, or edit paste. Whoa, that did not work. Hold on. I'm just going to do it in code view down here. So I'm going to paste over what was there. Okay. And as soon as you do that, you should be able to see that the, um, the titles of your pages are going to be all capitals and that your links are going to have all the hrefs with them now and a tags around it. So we need to do that on all of the HTML pages that are part of our site. So we've done it on a, about an index. I'm going to go ahead and open events and do it there. We're just kind of overriding what's there with a new menu. 
Um, and then we also want to do the two pages that are inside the menus folder. So menu one HTML. Save them when you're done. Menu two HTML paste and save. So now we have all our pages updated with our HTML menu. And we can close out of everything. Okay, so let's talk about link paths for a minute. Okay, so if we're on the index page, the home page, and let's say we want to go to menu one. Menu one is inside of a, a folder. So we have to go inside the menus folder slash menu one dot HTML. Okay. If we want to go from this menu folder out of the menus um, folder, then we're going to have to use a different notation. To get out of a folder, you have to use the notation dot dot slash in front of the file name. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. Um, go ahead and open up menu one dot html. Okay, we've already changed our main navigation, but the links are not going to work properly unless we tell it where to go, okay? So right now, if I previewed this, or if I'm in live view, it's not gonna let me go to the about page. See how it says file not found? Um, so what we need to do I messed it up now. Okay. Let me try again. Okay, so what we need to do is go into our code view. Our I'm just going to work from the split view because that's easier for me. Um, and we're going to click on the word home. And you'll see that it says index.html. We can't get to index.html unless we go out of the menus folder. Okay. So in front of index.html, we need to put that dot dot slash notation that I was talking about. Okay, so we want to put dot dot slash index.html. So what that means is hop out of the folder that you're in and go to the index page. Okay, and then press enter to finalize that. So we need to do that for only index, about, and special events. The menus pages are fine, okay? So double click on it and put dot dot slash in front of it. You can do it in the code too. It makes no difference if you change it in the code. Special events, you wanna put dot dot slash and then events.html. Okay, so this is what your code should look like. It should have a dot dot slash in front of those three, but not in front of menus, menu one, okay? Now, if you think about it, if you're inside of here already, do you need to go inside the menus folder to get to menu one? No. So we're actually gonna remove menus from in front of it and it's just going to say menu1.html. Okay, go ahead and save that. OK, 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to link lunch menu and dinner menu. Those don't have any links yet. They're down here on line 23 and 24. They're just list items, okay? So if you highlight the word lunch menu, or you can double click on it. Actually, let's go to design view. Design view lets us highlight it. So let's highlight it and go down to browse. And we're going to go inside the menus folder and choose menu one as our lunch menu. And click open. And then let's do the same thing for your dinner. So highlight the words, go down to your little browse button, and choose menu two. Okay, so this is what it should look like in the code. It should put an A tag around it, and it'll say menu1.html is your lunch menu, menu2.html is your dinner menu. Okay, now we got to repeat all this for the other menu page because we've made all of our links work on this menu page. But we need to make them work on the other one. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to go from line 11 to line 16 and copy that. And then I'm going to open menu 2 and paste it. So once you get one page working, just use copy and paste and it will make your life a lot easier. I just noticed something. This has two links so I'm going to delete that because it should just say special events. Let me fix that on the other one too. Okay, and then you can also do copy and paste for the submenu if you want. Um, so line 23 and 24 is all we changed. So copy that from menu 1 and paste it over the top of menu 2. Okay, so that adds your hyperlinks for the menus. The next thing we're going to do is create an email link on the about page. So we can close out of these two and open up the about page. Um, so on the about page it has a section that says email and then their email address. You can set it up to where if they click on that, it will bring up their email client. So if you're in design view, make sure you're in design view and highlight the word info at freshbistro.biz. That's their email address. When you highlight it, then go over to your insert panel and go down until you get to email link and this is how you insert an email link you can put different text here if you want or you can just leave it as the email address okay click OK and it will add a link a href and then it'll say mail to colon and then their address. Okay, that's how you create an email link. Go ahead and save that. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to rename a few pages for search engine optimization. So, for example, 
if you name something menu one, a search engine doesn't know if that's going to be what menu it is for your restaurant. So we're going to rename those to lunch menu and dinner menu. Um, so go ahead and click over in your files panel. If you click in the right spot on your titles, um, you should be able to change the name of it. And if you do it in the files panel, it's going to update all the links on all the pages that access that file. Okay, so that's why it's a good idea to do it inside of Dreamweaver. So if you select menu one, the name, we're going to call that one lunch-menu.html. We're going to change the name of it. And it's going to ask us, do you want to update the links in the about page? And you're going to click update. So what it should do is it should change our link up here and it'll say lunch menu. Let's see if it changed it on the other page too. Nope. It should do it on all of them. Not sure why it didn't. I'm gonna try undoing that. Close out of all of those and change it to much more. Okay, so it should change it on the index page. It should change this to lunch menu. Not sure why it's not. I'm going to have to go in manually and do all of them. But thankfully, it's not a very big site. So just check all your HTML files and see if it updated for you. Because it might have worked for you. I did something weird. Um, on the about page, it changed. Let me see if it changed on the lunch menu page. Yeah, it changed on there. Okay. Um, so try closing out of all the files before you do it. And then change menu 2's name to dinner menu. Dinner dash menu. And click update. So the only one that's used on is the menu one and menu two. Like I said, it should do this automatically. But I'm just double checking mine. Because it didn't work the first time. Okay. So, if you use names like that, then it will help with search engine optimization, basically. Okay, so you can close out of all the files. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is create document titles for each of our pages. So you're gonna open up index.html. I'm on page 52 in the book. And we're going to look at the split view so we can see the design and the code view. And if you go down to the properties panel, you can see that this is called untitled document. We need to give our documents names on line 5 where the, where the title tag is. Otherwise, the search engines 
won't be able to um, index our site. Okay, so we're gonna go up to this is kind of a quicker way to do it than going through each file. Okay, so we're gonna go to find and we're gonna go to find and replace in files. So we're looking at all of our files. And this is what you want to find. So you want to find anything that says untitled document in those files. And you want it to say entire current local site. And then in the replace field down here, you're going to type Frank and Bergman Fresh Bistro and then you're going to do the vertical pipe and Lancaster comma California and then another vertical pipe and then a space. So it's going to take all of the untitled documents and put that in there and then we can make each one specific after that so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click replace all and it's gonna go through all of our root folder and find where there's untitled document and replace it with that okay so replace all yes so see how in the title tag now it says what we typed, Frankenberg Moon, Fresh Bistro, Lancaster, California, and then space. Okay, so now on the index file, right after the title but before the ending of the title tag on line 5 you're going to type something that is specific for this page only and that is gourmet casual dining okay and then you'll save that and we're going to go through each page specifically and give it a specific name but this is like the general name for each page that search engines, engines are going to look for. Okay, So it's telling us it, it replaced that on all these pages. Um, so we're going to go next. We're going to open up the About page. And at the end of our title, we're going to put Hours and Contact Information and save that. the events page we're going to add special event facilities um, the lunch menu we're going to add lunch menu And then for dinner menu, we're going to add dinner menu. So this is going to help search engines find our site easier. Okay, and you can close that when you're done. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to hide certain files from uploading to the server. And the only reason you would want to do this is if you have a folder like the resources folder that has an AI file or a PSD or just some kind of working file that you aren't using on the website but you want to keep it with all of the um, pieces of the website. So you can actually do what's called cloaking and cloaking will overlook 
whatever folder or file you don't want it to upload, okay? When you're uploading your site to the server. It doesn't make a huge difference except when you have really large files um, like Photoshop documents or something that take up a lot of room and you don't want those on your server, you just want them on your com on your local computer. Okay. So what you're going to do is go to the site setup dialog box. So go to site and manage sites. And then you're going to double click on Bistro. And then you're going to go down to advanced settings and click on cloaking it should be enabled already okay so enable cloaking should be checked and you want to click save and done okay so you expand the resources folder so you can see what's in there and then you want to right click on the folder resources and then you're going to go down to cloaking and choose cloak and that's all you have to do so basically that red slash through it means that if you put this on a server right now it's not going to upload those two files so the very last part of every chapter they want you to remove the site definition as I talked about earlier, I don't um, think that's very important, so I don't mind if you actually just skip that step. The site definition is a file, an STE file, that defines the settings that you have over here in the, the root folder panel. Um, basically, they want you to do that so that you can keep this page clean and you don't have to um, have a bunch of sites but I, I actually haven't had any negative effects from having like a whole list of sites here so it's fine with me if you don't want to do that portion of it um, if you do you can just go and click on the site and then click on this little folder export the currently selected sites now notice You'll notice it doesn't export the files of the site. It only exports the settings. Okay. So if you export that, you can't turn it into me as your site. All it does is save the settings. Okay. So if you want to do that, I would just suggest um, exporting it in the site file or even creating a new folder called site definitions and then just put it in there and it's just the settings for your site okay it's not the actual site does that make sense all right so we're done with project one you're gonna have a project review which is quiz one and then you're gonna have a portfolio builder project on page 62 that basically requires you to redo what we did in project one with a different site okay so let me know if you have any questions on that otherwise I will see you in project two